everybody, welcome to Solar Plaza's uh, Up Close. Uh, today, I have the pleasure to be here with uh, Alexander, uh, and we are recording this Up Close uh, in the run up to our conference uh, in France, our Solar Plaza Summit France, uh, on June the 16th, where we will uh, be talking about France and uh, developments about uh, solar PV in France. Uh, Alexander, I'm very happy to have you here today to talk about uh, France. Could you briefly introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. So uh, my name is uh, Alexandre Tin, and I'm working at uh, Aurora Energy Research, which is basically a power analytics provider worldwide. And uh, in this role, I'm focusing on the French market. So I'm leading the research on the French uh, power market. What we do mainly is that we uh, forecast the prices till uh, 2016 now uh, in France for different uh, for the base load prices, but as well for solar uh, assets onshore wind and offshore wind. Um, we as well look at other um, other technology or other commodities like, like hydrogen or batteries, uh, where we did recently uh, a publication on batteries in France. So thanks for having me and uh, happy to discuss like the, the future of solar in France. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Alexander. So it's, a, it's an exciting time to be focusing on France uh, right now. France has really strong ambitions really wants to be a leader in the PV uh, industry. It has a multi-annual energy plan, the PPE, where it has showcasted uh, strong ambitions towards becoming uh, uh, carbon neutral. Uh, uh, how do you see, uh, what do you perceive uh, for this PPE? Uh, how do you perceive the developments? Is France meeting its strong ambitions that it laid out here? And also looking ahead, uh, how do you see the targets being met in the future? Okay. Um, yeah, so, so basically France uh, set quite uh, um, high uh, target for, for, for the PPE being like 20 gigawatts in uh, 2023 uh, and between the 35 and 44 in 2028. So that, that's quite massive considering the fact that we still have uh, 13 gigawatts uh, currently. Uh, nonetheless, what we saw in the past is that the development of solar in France was quite low, around like one gigawatt. And uh, last year in 2021, uh, we saw around like 2.5 gigawatts. So uh, we really see a jump uh, uh, last year in, uh, in solar development. It's as well something that we see in the pipeline of, of people wanting to, to, to be uh, connected for a solar project that uh, this pipeline in, is increasing year after year. So uh, I would say that uh, the future is brighter than before. Now, will uh, France meet uh, their uh, PP targets? Uh, for 2023, I'm quite pessimistic that they will be met. Uh, afterwards, for the 2028 targets, uh, we would need like a ramp up of um, a bit higher than three gigawatt per year till 2028 in order to to meet the lower demand the the, the lower target which is 35 gigawatt um so yes uh, it it could be possible if there would be like a new development and, and new ways to to push more solar into the market but if we keep the if we keep the current rate um i'm afraid that these pp target will not be met okay okay uh, uh, what do you define as the most impactful international and national trends in France uh, that will affect the energy transition? Looking at the at the election, the energy topic was quite present into the discussion uh, recently, and I think the, the the most important fact would be like the 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 speech of Macron during the 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 Belfort speech, like in the beginning of uh, of, of October where he set like an uh, ambitious target for, for solar, where he, um, um, he wanted to aim for um, 100 gigawatt by 2050, and uh, as well put like the renewal of nuclear, um, like trying to, to put new nuclear online uh, by 2035. So that would be like the two main uh, parts. So, Looking at all the renewable, uh, there was clearly a choice made uh, towards uh, solar and offshore wind, while uh, onshore wind was a bit left uh, behind in this uh, speech. So I would say that's a great place to be in the solar business uh, uh, right now. Okay, interesting. Um, and 
when looking at France's subsidy scheme, uh, uh, what is showing the subsidy scheme about the ambition of France uh, also in terms of developing uh, the different PV markets? Uh, is, it, is, it, is it stimulating, for example, rooftop scale or utility scale projects? Could you share your insights on that? Yeah, definitely. So, so, so what happened is that uh, later last year uh, we had like new CRE auctions. So it's basically uh, the CRE is the, the the regulator and will uh, give the subsidy uh, for new capacity uh, for new renewable capacity in France. And we see we saw that this uh, the capacity uh, that was demanded was uh, quite um, there was an upward trend like times two times three. Uh, in order to meet these PP targets, um, and these are still like with quite a, a premium. So they, they for example, 2020, uh, 2021, the ground mounted was still at 55 euro per megawatt hour. So it's still like a, a good amount of money, I would say. And um, yeah, so so when we see like the the amount, the volumes of um, of capacity procured to subsidy, which is still like the main way to uh, develop uh, solar in 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 france um we see that the government want to to to, to push more, much more renewable one one of other thing for the, the the solar assets was the fact that uh, they try to simplify the rules uh, as like uh, france was quite known to have like quite difficult rules in order to put um, um renewable on the grid and basically, in the past, uh, anything uh, above 100 kilowatts uh, for solar asset was supposed to be like with a CFD, so up to competition. Um, and now what happened is that um, you still have like feed-in tariff till uh, 500 uh, kilowatts uh, in order to ease the, 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 the development of solar, uh, of roofs of solar uh, in France. Now, maybe looking backward are what are the, the, the biggest uh, market segments in France. Um, the, the biggest one is, is in terms of scale, you, you have like, um, I would say like medium to large scale solar, uh, which take uh, about like six gigawatts of the 13 uh, gigawatt in total, um, which account for like between one megawatt and 17 megawatts. So it's like medium to high. Um, and as well followed by a uh, rooftop solar, but much smaller, like uh, between and 100 uh, kilowatts. So that was in the past, but now what we see is that uh, th there is a shift towards like bigger project, like a project bigger than 17 uh, gigawatts. And we see a lot of, of uh, developer wanted to connect, it, uh, to, connect to, to the grid with this kind of project. Uh, of more than 17 gigawatts. So, so, so that's quite a, a shift when in the past, these kind of projects were quite small. Um, yeah, so this shift, uh, this shift is, is happening as, uh, as we speak, I would say. Okay, so France is now more looking into larger scale projects uh, uh, compared to previously perhaps more uh, uh, rooftop uh, uh, BV projects or larger scale yeah. projects. Like the, the medium to large, as I mentioned, are, are still there, I would say. We still have like a lot of project there. But, but uh, now what we see is that uh, a bigger project that, it, that is connected to, to the TSO, um, that, that, that's something that's uh, happening uh, in, the, in, in, in the recent year. Yeah, okay. And, uh, very interesting that you mentioned this, because in the, in the light of uh, a new project setting up uh, and also in, uh, with regards to their size, there's, of course, also this question of land use in France when it comes to uh, developing new projects. Uh, uh, permissions for land uh, have not always been as easy in the past. Uh, and there's also land competition, with land being used for different purposes. Uh, what do you see, how do you think that this question of land use is impacting uh, uh, solar and, for example, new ways of projects, such as AgriPV, which is seeing a strong rise in France? Yeah. Um, so, so basically, the, the the land use and the administrative burden from 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 uh, auction, I would say, are the two biggest problems that we hear from from a solar developer. So basically, like as you mentioned, agri PV can be like a, a way to tackle those. And and I would like separate like agri PV in two parts. One would be simply to uh, put panels in the field. Which, which is 
quite simple, I would say. Uh, the price are similar. And as well, um, yeah, it's, it leads to finding more lands because like in the Kru auction, you have a lot of requirements um, that you should choose like in, in, in priority, like wasteland and not like agriculture, agriculture land. Um, so that would be the first part where agriculture and PV can match together. Uh, the second one would be like, as you mentioned, agri-PV uh, itself. It was as well mentioned during the, the, the speech of, uh, of Macron uh, at Belfort. And basically this is much more innovation intensive because it, the, the goal would be to use like PV as a kind of uh, greenhouse in order to, to cover like apple, uh, apple field or strawberry or potatoes. It can be a bit anything, but it's uh, making like innovation between agriculture and as well PV. Um, unfortunately, current, uh, the, the, the thing is that these kind of technology or these kind of improvement are quite con cost intensive. Uh, so the LCOE will be way higher than normal ground-mounted uh, assets. And the CRE has uh, an auction for that, uh, which is called like innovative PV. But we have only like 140 uh, megawatts uh, per year. So in order to scale up uh, the, the, the industry, um, I think more subsidy would be needed in, the, in, in, the, in that direction. If, if the government wants to go in that, in that direction and according to, 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 to the latest speeches, is what we understand. Yeah, yeah. curious to see how Agri-PV can be uh, scaled up in, in France. Definitely a trending topic. You were talking already a little bit about uh, innovation. Uh, before delving further into, into other technological innovations, could you also maybe share your insights on uh, financial development, such as uh, the emergence of PPAs in France? Yeah, definitely. So, so as mentioned, the Creux, the Creux Ocean has still remained like the, the, the main source to finance uh, solar project. But looking at the, the price that we saw that we see on the market, um, I think more and more people will uh, look into PPA. Um, currently, uh, the, the PPA for solar, I mainly like Greenfield. So basically, it's a new project that is uh, built up uh, and that, that, that's like long term one. So between like 15 and 25 years. Nonetheless, what we see is that the, 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 the market is still shy in terms of PPE project to be uh, come, uh, come uh, to, the, to the market. And um, in the past, uh, the, the reason for that in the past is due to the, um, uh, due to the RN mechanism, basically. The, so the RN mechanism is a way to bring competition normally in the, in the French uh, market in which EDF is obliged to sell like 100 terawatt hour of their uh, uh, nuclear production at a fixed price of 42 euro, um, which obviously seems ridiculous uh, compared to the price that we see uh, nowadays on the market. And, and these kind of 100 terawatt hour um, could help like a big industrial to, to have like a cheap way to source their energy. Um, so basically if, you wouldn't have like this kind of of um, of a mechanism. Like um, industrial would look much more into PPA, PPA not only to uh, make themselves green um, in terms of a client perspective, but as well to edge themselves uh, against like uh, high electricity prices. Um, and and what we saw recently is that the government uh, increased this uh, this 100 tower to uh, 100, uh, 120 um, in order to go for for like the due to the the electricity crisis that that we we saw recently. So yeah, the, the, this mechanism is um, normally will fit out. The official date is 2025. But uh, Macron in his speech uh, also mentioned the fact that they, they want to revise or even uh, um, delete it. So, so if this kind of uh, mechanism would uh, disappear at the point, uh, the, the, the PPA market will, would become much, uh, much bigger. But yeah, now looking forward, as we see that uh, power prices are uh, this high, um, I, I would think that um, kind of... PPA PPA would would, uh, um, would build much more, as well as maybe like hybrid between PPA and merchant uh, project, 
uh, in the in the in, in the near future. Yeah, yeah. Curious also to see how uh, the revisions of uh, uh, Macron will impact the development of PPA and, of course, move towards hybrid PPAs. Um, in your work, you work, you focus a lot on technological innovations, Alexander. So for example, on uh, the co-location of solar with uh, uh, winds and batteries and hydrogen. Could you share, uh, maybe to close off, your view on uh, which technological innovations will impact the scale and the speed of uh, PV deployments uh, most significantly in the near future? Yeah, so I, I, I can talk about that. And then maybe to change the, 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 the paradigm uh, here, um, something that uh, a lot of uh, solar developers are, are talking about is the fact that they see a strong cannibalization of their price in the near future. So just to explain what is the concept is the fact that um, more you put solar into the system, more the price at, this, uh, at the period where the solar is producing will be low. So each uh, one, megawatt hour, one megawatt of solar in the grid will decrease the revenue of the other uh, solar asset. So you, you, could, you can now understand the, the cannibalization name. So there, there are two ways to think about that, uh, how to cope with this uh, decrease in, in, in uh, price capture on the market. There is a technological aspect, uh, looking at bifacial trackers or different orientation that will help like a uh, solar developer to, gr to grasp better price. And that's basically um, w the topic that we will explain into uh, during the, the, the session um, in June. And we see as well like these kind of tracker uh, appearing um, uh, in Spain, for example, where solar is, is more present. So I, I, I would think that it will come in, in, in France in the near future. The other thing is to have like collocation. So basically share a grid connection with another asset. And that would solve as well like uh, land availability or, or grid connection as you need like only one uh, grid connection for two different assets. And this can be done in, in, in different ways. So that can be quite in different ways, like, like for example, with batteries, that can be a thing if you, if you collocate like a Sora with battery. In the future, you could think about like collocating solar and electrolyzer in order to, to produce green hydrogen. Uh, but uh, currently, the most simple approach would be to, to look at a collocation between wind assets uh, and solar PV, because like the two uh, production patterns are quite decorrelated. Um, and, and, and so you, you could earn like more, uh, more money with like one grid connection if you can like collocate these two. And it, it's definitely something that I, I will talk about during the presentation. Yes, very interesting, Alexander. I've heard many uh, interesting things asked today and I'm very much looking forward to your session on June the 16th at uh, our summit. So thanks again for having you here and for sharing your insights. Thanks a lot.